Arte. Planning for the creation of a successful website is very similar to how an architect plans a building. An architect must make sure the building is structurally sound, attractive, and satisfies the needs of all the people who will use it. Because many of us intuitively understand what goes into building a house, we are going to use the preliminary planning phases of a house as a metaphor for your website's wireframe. Lots of images come to mind when we think of architecture, design, intention, function, beauty, structure, movement. We think of how a museum is very different to a fast food joint, which is very different to a house. The best architecture does more than just arrange space so you can figure out where you need to go. It's designed to help you go where you need to go in a way that appeals and delights. It's why we consider a website to be a form of persuasion architecture and why we call our development process the Minerva Architectural Process, or MAP for short. About a hundred years ago, the architect Frank Lloyd Wright wrote, a building should contain as few rooms as will meet the condition which give it rise and under which we live, and which the architect should strive continually to simplify the ensemble of the rooms should then be carefully considered that comfort and utility may go hand in hand with beauty. Consider that these words apply with equal truth to your website. Your website is a virtual building. Its web pages are virtual rooms. Calls to action are doors that lead your visitor to the next step in the persuasive process. Graphics and copy are windows that allow your visitors tantalizing glimpses beyond creating interest and desire. How are you going to begin creating an intentional construction that satisfies the needs of both your visitors and you? Between the very first imaginings of all the possibilities and the final moment of completion come the critical planning phases that make sure what you build does what it's supposed to do and doesn't fall down under its own weight. The rooms themselves are spaces, nouns, actions take place in these rooms, verbs, Activity, what people want to do, what people can do, what people are required to do, defines the purpose of the structure. A blueprint, just like a wireframe, is intended to answer only the what and why questions that define the beginning of the development process. But in answering these questions precisely, the blueprint sets the stage for how the how questions are handled later on. An important part of planning is understanding who is going to occupy the space, why they are occupying it, and what they can do while they're there. So let's look at who is going to occupy this house. Let me introduce you to Bryce. He's 29 and works for a software development company. He indulges his passion for meticulousness in refurbishing classic cars. He is an excellent woodworker and a baseball fanatic. He hates fixing food, even doing the guy grilling thing and can't figure out how people can sit still long enough to read anything more than the highlights of the morning paper. Mindy, 28, is Bryce's wife. They've been married four years and have finally saved the money to build their first home. Mindy is self-employed as a graphic artist. She's a voracious reader, an acclaimed gourmet cook, and considers working in her garden her best source of therapy. One morning, over cups of coffee, Mindy and Bryce sit with paper and pencils and start talking about exactly what they'd like in their house. They don't possess much technical knowledge about all the details that go into building a house, but they are the only ones competent enough to know what they require to support their lifestyle. So they start making a list of everything they need in their house. They talk about what the room is for and what they will want to do in the room. They want a garage with sufficient space for Bryce to tinker on his latest classic car and store all his tools. Mindy will need some space for her gardening equipment. They want a front room with a big window to take advantage of the property's lake view and enough room to comfortably contain an entertainment system that allows Bryce to feel he's sitting right there in the ballpark. Mindy wants a state-of-the-art kitchen and it doesn't have to be big but she wants to use very specific appliances. Bryce never cared for formal dining rooms, so they agree kitchen and dining functions can share the same space. Their house must have a basement for Bryce's woodworking, the equipment to provide heat, air conditioning and hot water, and a place for them to do laundry. A full bath is an essential, as is a master bedroom, not only as a place for both of them to sleep and get dressed, but also a special retreat for Mindy to read comfortably and quietly. And Mindy requires a room for her home office and workspace. 
With a general idea of what needs to be in their house, Mindy and Bryce turn to specifying all the functions for each room and thinking about how they will need to move around in their house. Thinking in terms of actions, they start with the garage, making a list of all the things the garage is responsible for doing, sheltering a car, storage for tools, and space to work. Then they determine where they will need doors. One should be able to let the car in and give access to the front yard. Mindy will need one to lead to the backyard for her gardening, and there must be a door leading into the house. Bryce will be the primary user of this space, so they understand the later phases of planning for this room must take into account his needs for being able to work comfortably on his cars and store all the necessary tools. But Mindy will use this space, although less frequently. She also has specific but very different needs that the design of this room must accommodate. Then the couple turn to a room that will be mostly Mindy's domain, the kitchen, with its associated eating space. This room has a completely different responsibility than did the garage. This room must allow them to cook safely, efficiently and enjoyably. It must also provide a conducive place to eat. From the kitchen, they decide they would like to be able to get directly to the garage for unloading groceries. Out to the deck, they plan to build out back for enjoying summer days and entertaining. And access to the front room, where they often like to eat while watching television. Mindy has a number of very specific needs that she wants the kitchen to fill, including space for appliances, sufficient storage, and ergonomic design. Bryce, the world's worst cook, thinks about the kitchen quite differently. His concerns are about getting in and out quickly and the comfort of his morning rituals. Bryce and Mindy do exactly the same thing for every other room in their house. They define what the room is responsible for, they decide what can be done in the room, and why the activity needs to take place there. They consider which other rooms they need to be able to have access to from that room. And they understand that although a room has specific responsibilities, they are both individual users who probably won't use the room exactly the same way. And finally, when they have thoroughly evaluated everything they can think of, the wireframe is complete. Looking at it on paper, Bryce and Mindy can imagine what the spaces would feel like to walk through and live in. And at this point, when all they have are lines on paper that are incredibly cheap to fix, they can decide if the plan needs adjusting or if certain functions need to be reconsidered. With the finalized wireframe in hand, they can begin to answer all their how questions and start storyboarding the appearance of their house. They can consider how big things should be, where they want lights, how the plumbing will run and what sort of flooring would be best for each room. Bryce and Mindy are still a long way off from their completed home, but their wireframe ensures they will complete the job faster and at a lower cost than if they simply walked into a construction company and said, we want you to build us a house. More than that, their wireframe ensures Bryce and Mindy get exactly the house they want that will do exactly what they expect it to do. Remember Frank Lloyd Wright earlier? Let's take a slightly different look at that quotation. A website should contain as few pages as will meet the condition which give it rise and under which it will be used, and which the business person should strive continually to simplify. The interaction of the pages should then be carefully considered that usability and the satisfaction of your visitors' needs may go hand in hand with beauty. Do you begin to see how planning to develop a website is a lot like planning to build a house? You can think of every one of your web pages as a different room. And just as each room has a different reason for being there, so should each page that you include in your website. Every page a visitor can click is a door leading her on a path through the persuasive process in a way that satisfies her needs. Just like Bryce and Mindy's blueprint, your website's wireframe defines the what and why of the creative process. At this point, it's too early to be asking how questions. The primary objective of the wireframe is to define and maintain the flow of your specific logical and business functions by identifying every click-through possibility and path your visitors might take. No pictures, no graphic design, just bare bones text and hyperlinks. You can click the links and see where you go. You can get a feel for the process of the site and help generate useful feedback at a time when changes and multiple iterations are a snap. 
a wireframe is responsible for answering the three essential questions that will shape your persuasive process. What actions satisfy the objective of the page? In other words, what is the page responsible for doing? Who needs to be persuaded to take action? And how do you most effectively persuade that person to take action?